So I guess the culture war stops for no one, and recently the newest battle in the culture war is over the new Batman movie starring Robert Patterson as Bruce Wayne and Zoe Kravitz as Selina Kyle, also known as Catwoman. And the anti shaws are kind of split on the reaction to this. Like, do they hate it for identity politics or do they actually like it because it's a good movie? And it's actually quite surprising to see some of the more like bad faith actors like Jeremy from Geeks and Gamers actually not criticizing it that much for the identity politics, but then other people getting really, really riled up based on one line Catwoman says and also based on some of the diversity in the casting. Now, what I wanna do in this video is just show you how these people will grasp at straws, but I also wanna point out how they often lay the foundations for an opinion to shift later on, because even though I said Jeremy from Geeks and Gamers kind of doesn't hate on the film for the identity politics, even though he mentions it, I believe in his review, what he is doing is basically leaving it kind of open so if there is a major backlash to the film coming, he can switch sides. A lot of these people say they need to think about it a lot more. And then what I also wanna do in this video is talk about Ben Shapiro. Now he is of course given his review and he is also complaining about this identity politics stuff. But then I wanna bounce off that and go into Ben Shapiro's failed screenwriting career. I don't know if you guys know this about him. And then talk about broadly at the end, why anti SAWs both get riled up about this stuff and how they completely miss the point of their favorite movies. Because like I always say, they get so mad about the most throwaway lines and just the most like surface level stuff that often doesn't even matter while giving an absolutely huge pass to films that actually have supposed woke politics. Like I made a whole video about the Dune movie and all these guys are saying, you know, it's one of the best sci-fi movies of all time. The messaging in the Dune books and the movie touches on like way more woke stuff, including anti-capitalism, says the director of the film, than something like the Batman mentioning white privilege and rich people being bad, I guess. So we're gonna get into all of that today. You guys are gonna enjoy this one, I think. And I'm sorry for those of you who literally cannot stand to listen to Anne SJW's whine. A lot of you always say like, you give credit to me for actually sitting myself through this stuff. It is very hard to do. It's also quite funny sometimes. I believe this is one of the more like ridiculous ones. So please stick around for some of these clips. But before we go any further, a lot of you often say to me, you forget to like the video because I don't tell you. So please like the video if you like the video and consider leaving a comment. The channel is actually suffering a bit of stagnation at the moment. I'm not worried too much, but it's always frustrating when you are slowing down, when you have a sub goal in mind that you want to hit this year. For me, of course, that is 100k subs. So please help me with my massive march onto that goal, hopefully by the end of 2022. Also, if you wanna support my work continuing, no matter what happens here, please consider becoming a patron. I'm trying to build up as many one to three dollar patrons as possible. And at the moment you get my Nintendo Switch friend code, so you can have me on the Switch. And you also get access to the private patrons Discord server. Also follow me on social media at The Cavernacle on Twitter and Instagram mainly, and also check out our subreddit in the description. And before we go any further, I'm not gonna spoil the movie. I haven't seen the movie. The the only thing we're going to be talking about is these like really throwaway lines. I don't think they ruin the movie. So unless you're like extremely sensitive to spoilers, I'm really not going to spoil anything in this video. But of course the Batman is like really, really hyped. It looks like it's bringing back that like edge from the Chris Nolan films. And generally people were like pretty excited. Like it looked cool. The aesthetics looked cool. The villain looked cool. Colin Farrell as the Penguin looked like unrecognizable. So people were very hyped for this one. But just to start this video, an article by Screen Geek, some fans are complaining that the Batman is too woke. So let's get into the Twitter reaction first before we get into the anti-SAW creators. So the newly released superhero film The Batman has been a hit with most audiences and critics with director Matt Reeves and star Robert Patterson receiving plenty of praise for their work along with the rest of the cast and crew. Some fans, however, have been majorly disappointed with the film. According to their complaints, The Batman is actually too woke for their liking in particular, it seems most of these fans are upset by one line of dialogue specifically. This particular line of dialogue, uttered by actress Zoe Kravitz, who plays Catwoman, aka Selina Kyle in the film, makes a direct reference to white privilege. 
As a result, some fans have taken the opportunity to vent on social media, and as mentioned above, many of them are simply saying the film is too woke. So, so the Batman is woke trash, but since it was made nowadays, I'm not surprised. So I'll let it out. White people bad, black people good, Lamal, not like real life, but whatever. Good to see that Catwoman has her priorities in the right place. It's definitely not the class that's the issue, but skin color. Despite the commissioner of the police being black, as well as the leading mayoral candidate, but sure, white people. I mean, I don't know how much I have to explain that Barack Obama being president doesn't mean that America is not racist or something. This seems to be the understanding of a lot of these nerds. It's just a line in a three hour movie. It doesn't make it less irritating though. This is why I mostly only watch old movies and anime. Yes, as we all know, no woke politics in Dog Day Afternoon. No woke politics in Cowboy Bebop. No woke politics in any animes or old movies. Also, these guys complain about like safe spaces when they definitely need a safe space. So going on to my favorite subreddit, Kotaku in Action, and it's just a it's just a post about the Batman scores $128 million. And then some of the top comments, that cringy white privilege line by Catwoman aside, the movie was okay. Though these guys seriously like hung up on one line. It's actually pathetic same thought here heard audible groans in my theater and that one dropped of course you did so did i i 100 percent believe these people but dc just can't help themselves can they nope they can't they're continuing on with the more stupid stuff like that such as barbara gordon being black for the upcoming batgirl movie despite cassandra being a batgirl they could use if they wanted to be more diverse someone else saying in a city with a brand new black mayor and black police commissioner it makes no sense I love when they race swap everyone but still complain about a racist society in their fictional world. It's not surprising this guy's got MAGA in his um, username. Like I said, Barack Obama's president, that means racism has been sold. People actually do think like this. It's actually really depressing. I remember John Tron in that debate with Destiny that I obviously made a video on was also saying stuff like this. I'm replying to that guy. They do the same thing in the real world, probably the most realistic thing in the movie. They just so badly want to be the rebels fighting against the establishment, pushing against the norm. They just don't realize that they are the establishment. They're ideas are long since mainstream and every mega corporation and mainstream culture support their narratives. They ignore black, Hispanic politicians, officials, DAs in favor of their white supremacist society. In their head, we still live in the 50s and they want that. They still want to be saviors, at least. Then they would have something to fight for, something to do in their empty lives. This stuff is so, so ridiculous. Like representation in minor aspects equals everyone is viewed as equal in society like i said obama being black look at the front bench of the tory party in the uk lots of diversity in that front bench does not mean that there is no racism in society so someone else talking about this and then someone adds in though the white privilege line was cringe but yeah this might be my favorite portrayal of a batman movie today so even if it's your favorite batman movie ever you're still getting hung up on one of the characters played by a black woman who is saying about white privilege. And the really funny thing about that is Zoe Kravitz recently came out and said she didn't get a role in The Dark Knight Rises because of her skin color. She said, I don't know I don't know if it came directly from Chris Nolan. I think it was probably a casting director of some kind or a casting director's assistant. Being a woman of color and being an actor and being told at the same time that I wasn't able to read because of the color of my skin and that the word urban being thrown around like that that was what was really hard about that moment. So now I want to get on to the anti HAW's reaction. And this one made me laugh quite a bit because it was Ryan Kennel and a segment of his review was going viral on Twitter because he was basically saying that although he likes the Batman film, the bits about white privilege and also Jim Gordon and Selena Carl having their races race swapped really, really annoyed him and took him out of the movie. A couple other complaints that I have and they have to do a little bit with identity politics. And there was one line that was in this movie that really threw me out of it. It is when Catwoman basically is saying they only care about themselves, these white privileged people. You didn't need to use the word white. You could have just said privilege and that would have basically done the job. But they said white privileged people is very distinct, very much stood out. It bothered me and it took me out of it. It's not something that needed to be done, but they threw it in there. I think it was way too on the nose. Didn't like it. Another thing, and this is a little bit of a spoiler, I guess. So warning for spoilers. It's not a major one, but there were only a couple good people in this in this movie, uh, you had Bruce Wayne, Batman, and you had Alfred. Those are the only two good white people. Um, the rest of the really the three other major players that I would consider like overall like moral good people were you know you had Jim Gordon, 
who's black in this. You add Catwoman, who's not white in this. And then you add the mayor, who's a black woman. Again, very much on the nose for current day Hollywood. Did not like that. Took a couple, took a little bit off the score for me, to be honest. Overall, my experience with it is an 8 out of 10. So after getting dunked on, he doubled down on his ridiculous take on his own channel. So that clip started making, I see this one. There's tons of, there's a couple different clips. This one alone has 1.1 million views. It had a lot of people triggered, a lot of people talking about it. Now, even if you just, take it based on what I'm saying, you can clearly say that what I'm talking about is identity politics in general. Just before that, I described a scene where Catwoman uses the phrase white privilege to describe everyone in Gotham who is a bad person. The reason that is, is because every single white person in the movie is depicted as evil, as corrupt, with the exception of Batman and Alfred. That's what that is a statement about. And even in this, I said, it didn't necessarily take me out of the movie or ruin it. And I still gave the movie an eight out of 10. So one more before we go on to some other ones. Here is Nerd Rock also complaining about the same thing. There is one line uttered by Catwoman, which we will discuss in the spoiler section, which damn near ripped me out of the entire film. And of course, we're going to start out with that line. Privileged white men didn't need to be there. Totally unnecessary. I suspect, along with people like Chris Gore, that that sounded like a studio note that was put in at the last minute. I would like to give Matt Reeves that benefit of the doubt, but he is from Bad Reboot. Quite frankly, it took me out of the film. It's going to take a lot of people out of the film. There was some groans. I did see it in Texas, but I will also say there was a lot of applause at the end of the film. So, did it ruin the whole damn thing? No. But it could have. So I think this is like the most ridiculous butthurt I have ever heard in my life, right? They're complaining about the white privilege line. And that is ridiculous in itself because, of course, it's a thing that exists. But these guys don't want to, you know, act like it exists. But okay, that, that's one thing. The fact that they're like talking about how every white character in the Batman film is shown to be bad. Every black character is good. Apart from Batman, the main character, and Alfred his butler and one of the main characters both being white. So they're saying that this film is trying to like demonize white people while the two heroes in the film are white people. They're also the face of the film and the main characters. Like how ridiculous is that? Like it's absolutely crazy to complain that the film is demonizing white people where two of the like moral people in the film, the stars of the film, the person you're rooting for, the protagonists are white people. Like I feel like I'm going insane and it just shows you they will try and find anything to complain about and they're the most fragile white dudes going because oh jim gordon is good zoe kravitz selena carl is i guess good but like that's a bit more morally ambiguous is catwoman really seen as like an ultimate good character she does team up with like all the villains constantly in the comics and then some like mayoral candidate again i don't really understand and also don't these guys keep on talking about like not seeing race and not seeing characters as a certain race so when they're watching the film they see Bruce Wayne and Alfred as good, and they see like these other characters as good, but then they start dividing up the whole film being like, well, here we have black and white people both being good in the film, and then we have white villains being bad, and somehow the message of the film is like, all white people are inherently evil. I do not understand this logic at all. It feels like they're really, really grasping at straws, but it also does seem, it does concern a lot of them, which is really, really, really bizarre. And we're going to get into Ben Shapiro, who said a similar thing. Like, like, seriously, how do you analyze a film like The Batman and come to this conclusion? While at the same time, with people like Ben Shapiro and Geeks and Gamers completely missing the politics of Dune. Like, you're showing you can try and extract some sort of political message where none exists, or doesn't really exist those exact lines. But at the same time, when somebody is obviously criticizing colonialism and capitalism, you completely missed the point. So one more video before we get to Ben Shapiro's. Here is Jeremy from Geeks and Gamers Review. And like I said, it's interesting that he only mentions the identity politics a tiny bit. Like, he doesn't even talk about it like these other guys, or even Ben Shapiro. Like, did you ever think that would happen? Did you ever think Jeremy from Geeks and Gamers would be the most mild critic of supposed identity politics in a comic book movie? That is just, like, blowing my mind right there. But then I also just want to point out in this video how he talks about how he doesn't really know how he feels about it. He's going to have to see it again and, like, think about it a bit more. And why I believe he does that, because I think what happens with a lot of these people, they see which way the wind is blowing. Because remember, Jeremy originally said he liked The Last Jedi as well. 
And then these are the type of people who make a whole grift for years and years and years on The Last Jedi. See the exact same thing happening with the Batman too. If like Matt Reeves comes out and calls out the fans or Robert Pattinson says, stop being like butthurt and stuff, I could see their whole channels all turning on the film and you know the potential franchise that might spawn off this film. I don't know how I feel about this movie. I have no idea how I feel. I'm very confused because I liked a lot of what I saw, but there's a lot of things that are not landing with me about this movie. Um, the Catwoman situation, I, I, Catwoman was okay. I liked Catwoman. I thought she did a good job. Um, but there was identity politics in this movie. It doesn't kill the movie. It doesn't destroy the movie. And it's not the primary focus of the movie, but it is there. There is identity politics in it. And they're subtle, but they're there. And you need to be aware of that. But it, that's not my issue with this movie, so I don't know how I truly feel about this movie, and I can only be honest with you about that. Overall, I did like the movie. I didn't like it as much as I thought I would. I think the movie's fine. I, there is identity politics. It's not overkill, but it's there. It's definitely there. Um, Robert Pattinson was very good in the role. So yeah, I just thought that was like important to highlight because again, although these guys like claim to love nerd media, although they're always whining about it, I honestly do think as part of their grift, they need to have their like finger on the pulse a bit. So they do leave it like open-ended. They will touch on the identity politics stuff, but if they like it, they will say like, I like it, but then they leave room to do a complete 180 if they need to. So I want to pivot away from the anti-SJW nerds for a second and get to the titan of intellect in conservative circles. That is failed screenwriter Ben Shapiro. Now, Ben Shapiro has very good taste in movies in that he thinks The Rise of Skywalker is actually good. Not like one of the worst blockbuster movies that has released in like the last 10 years, which it is. I will not accept any people saying otherwise in the comments. He also likes to make movie reviews of the biggest films. Now, someone who used to like review stuff a lot and sometimes still does and has like written a lot of reviews in detail about various things I like, especially like on my Medium before my WordPress, I find Ben Shapiro has written reviews and made reviews out of the Guardian review school where his reviews are basically explaining the plot. Like, I'm not joking. Every review I've watched of his is literally just explaining the plot of the movie and adding in, like, a tiny bit of criticism. And seriously, you're not going to get much out of this review. He doesn't even spoil it properly, despite it saying there are spoilers in it. And like, I watched it all and I didn't really have much spoiled for me. But Ben Shapiro has a very, very similar problem to these other guys. His similar problem is... He thinks the film is showing all white people to be evil. Like the actual Batman character hates the Batman character. And this drives me up an absolute wall. The biggest problem with the film is not the wokeness. Yes, there's some woke touches. You have Catwoman, who is a woman of color, who is, of course, good. And you have the black female mayor, who is good. And you have the black Jim Gordon, who, who is good. Every white character is apparently bad, like all of them. Fine, whatever. I don't really care about that. That's fine. You have Catwoman say stuff about white privileged elites and and she makes a suggestion that Bruce Wayne is a child when his parents were killed. He doesn't really have a right to be super upset about that because, of course, he was very, very rich. That that doesn't kind of rings hollow. You know, a lot of these lines seem like throwaways for for film lefty Twitter. It just feels like such a sellout. It feels like such a sellout of, of what Batman is supposed to be. Again, it's got a little bit of woke politics, but that's really not the problem. The problem is the broader woke orientation of the film. If the Nolan Batman was about the idea that you help innocent people by fighting criminality, and provide an inspiration to people to fight criminality. If that's the idea of Batman, which it is, that's completely thrown on its head here. Matt Reeves, whose credit is both a director and a writer on the film, he does not like Batman, and I can't get over this. How do you give $150 million to a dude to make a movie about Batman when he clearly does not like Batman? When he thinks that Batman is bad, and that Batman has to be shown the error of his ways and learn to be a nicer human being. The generalized cheap left-wing sensibility is, is very silly with regard, to, with regard to Catwoman. So Ben Shapiro also says the film has some sort of like woke orientation as well as, you know, demonizing white people, apparently. He also just seems extremely salty that he has not been given $150 million um, to make his own movies. Now, The Daily Wire does have like movies coming out. Apparently the first one was absolutely trash. There's another one coming out with Gina Carano. And the reason being is something I've long speculated. Conservatives are just like awful at art for the most part. There are some notable exceptions. I'd say Mel Gibson is a pretty good director despite being an awful human being. 
Clint Eastwood is not a very good director, I don't think, but he was a pretty talented actor. There are a couple others, like Tim Allen is like a fairly good actor as well, but there aren't really many. Like I think actors can sometimes be conservative and still be decent, like James Woods, despite being like an absolute lunatic, was good in Hercules, he was good in Once Upon a Time in America. But again, most like creatives are at least more left-leaning. And I think these anti SOWs and even Ben Shapiro himself, I think they prove this by really not understanding films properly. And just him like liking The Rise of Skywalker, I think, says so much, because Rise of Skywalker was like a synthesized corporate product, essentially a movie written by prequel memes and read it to try and please every fan, but still failing miserably, because even though there was a ton of fan service, it was mostly garbage and at the expense of a decent story and actually any semblance of pacing that made any sense. So before we go into his failed screenwriting career, I just want to like reflect on some of the things he said before. And this gets to my point a lot. So these anti SJWs and Ben Shapiro, which you've just seen, they will get annoyed about woke politics when Catwoman talks about white privilege or that they make some weird calculation in their head that the film is somehow demonizing white people despite starring a white person who's the hero because the Italian mob under like Falcone and Penguin's gang are mostly white people or something. But then at the same time, that's a point against the Batman. But Ben Shapiro said that Blade Runner 2049 was one of his favorite movies of 2017. He said Dune was like an absolute masterpiece and stuff. It may be the best looking science fiction movie ever. And this movie is just spectacular looking. Like from beginning to end, every shot is a piece of art. I think the movie is actually great. And here are two films made by the same guy, obviously, that are very, very political. And I would say like, Blade Runner is a bit more like subtext. I would say the themes that it deals with in the film do lend itself to a more lefty direction, but of course, the world of Blade Runner, both Blade Runners, is a world ruined by capitalism and with the second one, climate change as well. Like you cannot miss that when LA has like an absolutely massive sea wall. The whole of like San Diego is just like a rubbish dump. The weather is constantly like raining and snowing. While humans who have like some sort of genetic condition or have some sort of disease cannot actually leave Earth. Most of the rich people have already left. I failed to see how you can watch Blade Runner 2049 and not take away some of those messages from it, especially Ben Shapiro, who's been a big climate skeptic for a lot of his career. But that's not woke, that gets a pass. There's no woke orientation in Blade Runner 2049, but there's a woke orientation in the Batman. And most Batman films I've seen do not even lean left in my opinion. Like the Nolan Batman films are not woke at all. I think like the Dark Knight essentially tries to justify like morally the surveillance state. But then we take that even further to Dune. I feel like Dune is like subtle for like a blockbuster about its politics. I don't even think it's like even subtle compared to Blade Runner, which, where Blade Runner is more about like the world building and you kind of take the political messaging not necessarily from the direct narrative, more from like the world around it. I think Dune is a bit more on the nose. Like I said in my other videos about Dune, like the scene with like the palm trees where he tells the guy like maybe they should stop growing them because it takes like so much water and Arrakis is a desert planet and loads of people really struggle to get water. I think it's a nice thing about like just general colonialism and how like these colonialists will often use resources in a very ineffective way to the detriment of the population and like I showed pictures before, like colonial gardens in British colonial times and stuff like that in various very hot places like India or Egypt and stuff like that. I think it's like a nice little link there, but there's loads and loads of stuff. But what Ben Shapiro took out of Dune wasn't that there was any like woke politics or criticism of capitalism, which the director said there was, or criticisms of colonialism, you know, Ben Shapiro, big supporter of America and Israel to massive settler colonial nations, you think he would take great offense at any critique of these things, but he doesn't. And there's no woke orientation. And the only thing he says about the film politically is basically that, that the Harkonnens were the Soviet Union. And I literally do not understand where he got that from. But you guys can put your own theories in the comments. But like I have always said on this channel is the reason I think conservatives cannot understand political messaging, like actual political messaging, is that they just see a film as a narrative and like the really explicit dialogue. So the reason they pick up on the Batman being like woke is both made up reasons about like white people being demonized, but also because Catwoman specifically said something that sounds like something you might hear in like current day political discourse. But because Ryan Gosling's character in Blade Runner 2049 doesn't say, look at what the economic system is doing to the planet and how it created climate change and how it's like destroying LA or that, you know, Paul Trades doesn't say, 
this is so wrong, colonialism is wrong, please let the Fremen rule themselves, father, or something like that to that extent. They just see A to B plot, anything in the background doesn't actually matter towards the political messages of the film. And that's why conservatives often create terrible art, because with their political messaging, they can never be subtle, it's always on the nose. And then it comes across as extremely preachy, where a lot of good art and a lot of good critiques of systems and like economics is often very subtle. And that's why I would say that something like The Big Short works quite well, despite dealing with like very, very complicated subject matter. And compare that to like Don't Look Up, Adam McKay's other film, which I thought was like a really, really poor job at trying to explain like how economic systems and how the media like gaslight people into not taking like world ending catastrophes seriously but don't look up was so on the nose and also somehow was so on the nose and still didn't address so many problems that i feel are more important than the problems it addresses in the film but it just shows how subtlety is still important even for left-wing messages and messages you agree with now with all of this in mind like i said it's probably not surprising that ben shapiro is actually a failed Hollywood screenwriter, so let's get into this. So what Ben Shapiro's failed career as a dramedy scriptwriter tells us about the American right by Greg Evans back in 2020. So we'll make no illusions about it, even though the man himself might. Shapiro comes from a privileged background. He grew up in LA where both his parents worked in Hollywood. His father was a composer and his mother worked as an executive for a TV company. In a strange coincidence, this is actually something I only learned today, his cousin is Mara Wilson, who is best known for playing Matilda in the beloved 90s family film. However, if you have seen her Twitter page and the messages that she endorses, it's fairly obvious that the two relatives share very different ideologies on life and society. As a child, Shapiro, apparently, was a prodigy and graduated from the Yeshiva University High Schools of Los Angeles in 2000, aged just 16. He then went on to graduate from both the Universities of Los Angeles and Harvard Law School by the age of 23, studying political science. In that time, he had set up his own media consulting firm, Benjamin Shapiro Legal Consulting, and had also written syndicated columns for national newspapers when he was just 17 years old and written two books. Despite his overwhelming success in the world of political commentary, things should have been very different for Shapiro. Yes, there was a brief period where he could have become a screenwriter for television. Rather than plunging you straight into this strange story, we'd like to take a look at this clip that was recently shared by video editor and YouTuber Vic Berger. Was that a comedy? Was it sitcom? Was it drama? It was more of a dramedy. It was yeah. based on Harvard Law School. It was a dramedy. I, I've written a couple comedies, uh, kind of hour-long dramedies for, uh, you know, spec script. And it have they been bought? Uh, no. At the time, Shapiro was promoting his fourth book, which was titled Primetime Propaganda, the true Hollywood story of how the left took over your TV. We won't bore you too much with what the book is about, but you can probably guess from the title. It bemoans the lack of conservative voices in Hollywood television since the 1970s. However, as Matteson points out to him in that above video, his take on the industry isn't accurate. At this point, we should probably tell you about how these scripts came about. According to the book, after he graduated from Harvard, he began interviewing TV executives about liberalism in the television world. This is where he met Leonard Goldberg, who was the former head of programming for ABC and was once president of 20th Century Fox. According to Shapiro, Goldberg proposed that Shapiro write a pilot episode for a show set at the Harvard Law School, which he accepted. Shapiro wrote a spec script that was reportedly well received and began the process of finding an agent. It wasn't long after this that he got a phone call from a television agent who, according to Shapiro, informed him that he'd been blacklisted. This comes from primetime propaganda and supposedly what the agent said one of our agents Googled you and found your website. I'm not sure we can represent you because he thinks your political views will make it impossible for you to get a job in this town. He also recounted this in more detail in the same book tour, this time in June 2011, during a talk at the Heritage Foundation, where he claimed that a Hollywood producer was familiar with his work and told the agent to blacklist him, adding that hundreds of conservatives within the Hollywood system are too scared to express their views out of fears of the same thing happening to them. So what would the world rather have? Ben Shapiro, the screenplay writer, or Ben Shapiro, the awful YouTube reviewer and political commentator? Because it seems that this rejection set him down the path of political commentator, and I really, really struggle to believe that he was blacklisted from the industry. Like, even if we took his story at face value and maybe some producer didn't like his politics and told the agent, like, not to work with him, are we seriously meant to believe that this one producer was so, so, like, I don't know, influential in everyone, he could effectively, like, blacklist Shapiro, whose parents both worked in the industry from ever getting another gig? It feels like 
His screenplay was just rejected. Some guy like this who has been told his whole life, you're a genius, like you've written books when you're 17, you've had like stuff published in the New York Times or wherever at 17 years old, you graduated high school at 16 and you've been to Harvard and everything, you finish all that stuff by 23, you're a genius and you can do anything you want. But just like you can tell probably from his media reviews and his actual taste in film, the script probably just wasn't very good. But that's just me speculating because you probably have heard so many people who have written screenplays and had so much of them rejected. I think of Sam Eshmael, who made my favorite TV show, Mr. Robot. And if you listen to a lot of his interviews, just his whole life, like trying to make things in film and TV and everything, like a lot of rejection and trying to make things work. Like Sylvester Stallone with like Rocky. And there's like plenty of other examples, like Oliver Stone, who's autobiography i've listened to the audiobook which he narrates he talks about trying to get platoon made and even when he's actually a successful screenplay writer he still cannot get this movie made and keeps getting rejected but like i said ben shapiro is so fragile he probably took it so badly that he essentially like became the joker and became like one of the worst and actually very, very influential political commentators in America. But again, proving anti-SJWs and conservatives don't actually understand movies, don't actually understand when there's actual like left-wing messaging in films because they often love these films while crying that, you know, films like The Batman have a woke orientation for literally like one throwaway line by one character and some of the casting decisions. Really, really ridiculous, but proves they will cry at anything. But anyway, let me know what you guys think down in the comments. If you want to follow me on social media, at The Cavernacle on Twitter and on Instagram. If you want to join our community, check out the subreddit in the description. And if you want to support me on Patreon, that is in the description as well. And if you made it this far, thank you for watching.